Good evening. This is a meeting of the Board of Education of Scarborough School System. It's December 18th, 2014. May I have the attendance, please, Mrs. Sizemore? Mrs. Dealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Ling? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? Here. Ms. Hartle? Here. Please join me in the pledge. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, there are no adjustments, excuse me. Adjustments for adjustments. Okay. You will see that uh, we are having a workshop this evening, um, but we decided to be in the business setting in order to accommodate all our students and parents who will be recognized this evening. So news business 5.0, uh, minutes of December 4. Move approval is printed. Second. Seven. Any comments, any questions about those minutes? No? All in favor? Six. The winter high school coach. Is um, there a motion? Is it as presented. And um, there are no more winter coaching appointments to be made. <laughs> Thank you. Following this one, or <laughs> <laughs> there's none this evening. <laughs> yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, the middle school winter coach positions. Move approval is printed. Second. Discussion. Are we, are we voting on both at the same time? Okay. okay. Yeah. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Six. Okay, and we have 6.0, our workshop, and this is our recognition of fall high school athletics. Um, who's here today? Uh, Lance for Johnson is uh, filling in for Michael okay. Cage, who is at a, an event for school. Okay. Hi, folks. I'd just like to apologize to Mike. He got um, called away in a little, bit of a little bit of an emergency, so he wasn't able to, to make it, but I think he'll probably be here uh, shortly. Um, my name is Lance Johnson, I'm a head football coach at Scarborough High School, and uh, I'd like, just like to thank, on behalf of Mike, uh, thank the board, um, and thank Dr. Entwistle and Mrs. Uh, Sizemore for having us here tonight. Um, I'd like to thank all the coaches and players for their efforts this fall. Uh, it was certainly a, a, a tremendous fall sports season for Scarborough High School, so uh, the players and coaches did an outstanding job. Um, we had, at Scarborough High School, we had six of our coaches be recognized as coaches of the year in their league. So um, Mark Diaz for soccer, Mike Farley for, for soccer, Jim Harmon and Ron Kelly for cross country, Kerry Mariello for field hockey, and Mike Murphy for golf. So it's pretty amazing for one school to have six coaches of the year um, in, in, in their league. So uh, the coaches did an outstanding job. Um, I'd like to start by having uh, each coach come forward and just tell you a little bit about their season and, uh, and recognize some of their players. Uh, I guess I'll start. So our football season um, got off to a little bit of a, well, a lot of bit of a, a slow start. So we started off pretty roughly. We played some of the best teams in the state. Uh, in, in our first four games, we played three of the best teams, and, uh, and things didn't go real well. Um, our, our players were very resilient, though, and uh, diligent into uh, following instruction and, and, and continuing to work hard in practice. And uh, we ended up winning five games in a row and uh, making it to the playoffs. And we won a home, home playoff game uh, against Sanford High School. And we lost in the second round of the playoffs to the eventual state champion um, in, in Class A. We uh, cut that in, that in that game. We cut the score to a, a two-score game um, in the fourth quarter. And uh, we had 350 yards of offense, which is uh, – more offense than anyone in our conference had against them all year. Um, we had, uh, at the end of the season, Milani Hicks, our wide receiver and cornerback, has been nominated as a Fitzpatrick Trophy finalist. And uh, I'd like to commend our, our players um, for our continued, uh, continued support of the Team Kyle Foundation um, by having a walkathon and, and participating in their 5K fundraiser. 
and uh, and uh, I'd like to thank our players also for the support of the Wounded Warrior Project. And here tonight to uh, to represent the football team are Kevin Caldwell, Patrick Shaw, and Andrew Simons. If you guys could stand up, please. Do they want to say anything? Would you guys like to speak? <laughs> no? No pregame speech, Kevin? Okay. <laughs> uh, so first I'd like to have Mark Diaz, the boys' soccer coach, come forward and talk about his season. Yeah, uh, along the same lines as Coach Johnson, I'd uh, like to thank the school board, all the administration, Mike LeGage, Robin Carrier, uh, my parents who were very supportive this year. Uh, our season, uh, we had a great season, very fortunate. Uh, we had two returning starters from uh, from the year before, and uh, I think a lot of people thought that uh, – things wouldn't go our way, but uh, my team managed to uh, have an undefeated regular season. They were a, the uh, conference champs. They were the number one seed, and uh, they made it to a regional final, and if you got to see that game, it was it was a great game, and uh, they worked as hard as they could, and they, they played well enough to, to be successful, but uh, it was a real life lesson for us, and we didn't win the game, obviously, but uh, and they had a hard time with it. But uh, in the in the long run, I, I think in some weird way, it's going to help us. Uh, this this team was real special in terms of we were so young and inexperienced. I asked them to uh, to really put everything they had into it, and uh, I hope you got a chance to see any of our games because their effort was unbelievable. Uh, I'm real proud to work with these guys. Uh, their chemistry was unbelievable. Most years, I have to, uh, I usually do a lot of team building activities to try to bring the team together. But this group, I didn't have to do a lot of tricks or find ways to to mold them that way. They they were on the same page from the beginning, and, and that was it was really fun to watch. Uh, our sportsmanship was great. We had one yellow card in 17 games. Uh, I had great leadership. My two captains are here, Sam Ware and Ian Corey. If you could stand up, please. Uh, both players made All-State. Uh, that means the two of the best players in the state of Maine, and uh, and they were just great leaders. Uh, they weren't extremely vocal. They just led by example. And Ian Corey was a defensive player of the year in our conference. Uh, I don't know what else to say except that I had a great time this season. And, and I know people think, well, you didn't win all these games. But we just we had a great time. It's as much fun as I've had coaching uh, in a long time. And, and my players uh, just deserve a lot of credit. They really played hard for their community. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next, Doug Bennett's going to come up, and he is going to uh, speak for Mike Farley for girls' soccer. Hi, thank you. Hi, uh, Coach Farley's in uh, Philadelphia right now in business, so you get me. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this year, our season we went 14-2-1, and one, and uh, we far exceeded our expectations going into the season. Um, we made it to the West Main Final, and much like the boys did. Uh, in between the beginning of the season that we would have made it to the West Main Finals, we were leading – the eventual, I can't say their name, the eventual state champion uh, in the second half with a chance to uh, go up 2 nothing. Um, I would have sold my soul for that. And we, we were there. It was an amazing season. Uh, this team, in my eyes, at least redefined uh, women to be a team and for many of these players, women to be a teammate. Uh, we did a lot of great activities like we participated in the uh, a walk-a-thon for breast cancer. We did a community service project for the Booster Club. We did the Ice Bucket Challenge, all things that brought this team be uh, closer and closer together. Uh, as coaches, we changed formations uh, with these players many, many times. 
sometimes in the middle of the game just to see how they handle it. And uh, no matter what we threw at them, they took on the challenge with great vigor and uh, intact everything we did for, with them. Um, this is honestly one of my favorite seasons I ever had. Um, you know, disappointing ending. It was, uh, it was a great, great experience for me and uh, many of the players. Um, as many teams, we had a lot of players make all-conference and all-state. We had a uh, first-team all-conference with Sam Spotter, Ashley Gleason, and Catherine Kirk. Honorable mention, we had Ashley Perillo, Mary Farnkoff, and Emma Smith. All-academic team, Catherine Kirk and Miranda uh, Page. And for all-state, we had Sam Sparta, Ashley Gleason, and Catherine Kirk. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And next, what to have Jim Harmon come forward to speak about uh, cross-country. Thank you for recognizing us tonight. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Mike LaGage and Robin Carrier for all their help and support, uh, especially the parents for everything that they do. And um, these seasons, uh, even though it's uh, just a regular season, cross country or football from uh, the end of August to uh, into November, for some of us, it's uh, it, these guys start in June for this. So it's really like the longest season of the entire year. Um, and so I'd really like to thank the parents for all their support, but especially the athletes for everything that they've done. Uh, I knew it was going to be a special year when uh, it was the end of June, the first practice we had. We had the largest turnout I've ever seen in my 17 years here. Um, and it was uh, from there on, it was just incredible. Uh, they trained, uh, bonded together, trained hard. A uh, couple other things in the season that uh, were very impressive to me. Everyone showed up for the team pitcher, <laughs> which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's hard to get 25 guys there at the same day without uh, extra curricular activities. Um, and then the uh, Belfast Invitational, which is two hours away. It's an invitational meet, not a league meet. Uh, we went up there, and every runner on our team was healthy and participated and ran, so it was really nice. Uh, as far as the season record, um, we did go undefeated throughout the season. Uh, it wasn't as easy as it sounds. The guys had to battle all the time, but we were undefeated in the regular season. We started off with the uh, um, win at the SMAA relays, and we had one guy that was undefeated himself all season. He is here, one of our captains, Jacob Terry, if you could stand up. We did have a couple other captains that were very good and supportive and very good role models, uh, Sean McGovern and Colin Tardiff. Uh, they aren't here tonight. But uh, Jacob is also our MVP. He was recognized as an all-athlete and all-academic at the SMAA banquet. At that banquet, we had more representatives from Scarborough than I do believe any other, any other school system, so, and that's for academics and uh, uh, athletic achievement. Um, as far as finishing up the season, we were looking good all the way until we went up against Falmouth in the regional meet, which we knew they were good. We just don't see them throughout the season since they're, they still compete in the Western Conference, the Western Main Conference. Um, and so we went to the regional meet undefeated, and they did get us there by a few points. And the guys, you know, we, we knew we had to come back, and this was another thing that was very impressive about this team is they, they, didn't, uh, they weren't afraid. They came back the next week up to uh, it was a Belfast again, and uh, this time they were victorious by over 14 points. So I uh, came back, just a great season uh, and a special season. Can't uh, haven't ever been more proud of a team and just what they accomplished and their attitude and team bonding. Just an incredible season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. My apologies for being tardy. Coach Ron Kelly, girls cross country. I'd like to thank the board for recognizing tonight. Uh, I'd like to have two captains. One, unfortunately, is sick today, and the other one, which is Maria Quattro. But Maddie Soroy, please stand up, the other captain. And then, uh, <laughs> and then our top five out of seven at the state meet, please stand. <laughs> and the good thing about those five that were the top five at the state meet for us, they're all back next year. Um, it was certainly a memorable year, um, but it started a year ago at the end of last year when I knew that 
we were going to, you know, having to been in the state meet the last time in 2010, we had a streak where we weren't there. However, uh, I knew that we had some excellent possibilities coming up. So we started the season with a lot of expectations. Um, we have a running camp, and certainly there um, you could see that uh, things were looking bright for us. Um, went into the regular season and had some close meets. And in cross country, it doesn't matter what you do at the beginning of the year or the middle. It's what you do at the end of the year. And uh, the team believed in themselves. They believed in what I was trying to tell them what we could do throughout the season. And uh, that was very important. The team was uh, a very close-knit team. Um, we had a turning point in the season. Um, we had a meet at Macaulay, and uh, it was a point where we had to get our group of our top five closer together if we were going to be there at the end of the year. And uh, maybe some of them were a little questionable, why are we doing it, and you know, why not just run as hard as we can. But uh, it certainly paid dividend. It, it uh, made our fifth runner uh, realize that she had the capabilities of being where she should be. Um, we went into the end of the season to regional meet. Uh, we knew that Falmouth and Mesabesic would be the teams that we would, you know, battle for. Um, and that meet at the regional meet, not a course that we necessarily like at Inbrook, a very hilly course. However, we ran well. Uh, we lost by 11 points. The big thing coming out of that, the difference of their fifth and our fifth was like 30 places in the meet. So I felt really confident and told the girls, hey, we're going to go to Belfast. We've always run well there. It's not a hilly course. And uh, I think the girls believed in it, and they believed in themselves. And we went to the state meet and uh, couldn't ask all of them to do any better than what they had. Uh, we knew it was a close race when the finish, uh, the last runner came across, and when the final scores came out, we ended up uh, winning by three points. So it was a very exciting year of the season for the girls. And, and building up to that race, um, you know, I had the cell phone, and we were able to see that field hockey team won a state championship just before the boys went off. The boys went off, they won, and then it was our turn. So it was really neat seeing that, uh, you know, within an hour and a half, we had three state championships across the state. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was an excellent young group of ladies. Uh, it was a joy to work with. They believed in each other. They believed in ourselves. Um, you know, they believed in what the coaches uh, wanted them to do. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the parents, their support. And, uh, yeah, uh, we've got a target on our back uh, for next year. Um, but uh, certainly the girls gained a, a lot of confidence in themselves this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Coach Sean Roberts for volleyball. Hello, thank you again. Uh, thank you for all your support of uh, Scarborough Athletics. Uh, my name is John Roberts. I'm the varsity coach for uh, girls volleyball at the high school. We had a very successful season this year after losing all of but one of our starters from last year. Um, and we also had to overcome a, a devastating injury to one of my best players. But we ended up um, doing really well. Uh, had a very successful year in terms of wins and losses, ended up losing in the state uh, champion, uh, state playoffs to the eventual state champions. Um, had a great time working with the girls this year, and the sport of volleyball is growing all over the state of Maine. It's really exciting, and the uh, level of competition has grown. And uh, looking for great things next year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Coach Mike Murphy for golf. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank publicly the uh, the board for not only this year, but for the last 26, 27 years. Uh, I also want to thank uh, publicly um, Willowdale uh, Golf Course with uh, Pam and Rick Lewis. Uh, without their support, we wouldn't be playing uh, really free golf, and it's uh, such a wonderful wonderful thing for the town and for the school to have so I uh, really can't thank them enough. I also want to thank my parents uh, did a great job of supporting our kids 
and uh, providing the kids with, with the little extras, and uh, I can't thank them enough. Uh, we had a terrific season. I mean, we, you play 10 matches and you play some good competition, and to walk through and to beat those teams uh, day in and day out was really nice. But you still don't know what you're getting until you get to the, to the state championship level. And uh, this was a group that uh, really believed, and they were not afraid of, of, of succeeding. And in golf, it's all confidence. And we've had some really good golf teams over the years, but this group was not afraid to, to really succeed. And uh, kids like uh, Drew Kane, uh, who was an all-state golfer, uh, was absolutely terrific all season long. The kid only had three double bogeys all year long, which is insane for the amount of holes that he played. Uh, my seniors, uh, Chandler Langloy and Braden Kane, had great season. They were all SMA, uh, all conference. Uh, Mitchell Wedge, a junior, was all SMA as a player as well. Uh, but uh, I can't uh, – this, this team was, was great to be around. They were like adults out on that course. They were kids that really represented themselves, their families, and the school system in their, in their best way. And uh, I was really happy for them uh, when they came in with a winning score up to uh, Natanis up there in uh, Vassalboro. So I want to thank you again. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and Coach Mariello, field hockey. Good evening. Uh, again, thank you again for this uh, recognition. Uh, it's been an outstanding season, uh, as um, most of people are aware. Uh, state champs this season, 18 and 0, as as great as it could be, and uh, we ended up in uh, an epic fashion with a 2.1 second win uh, <laughs> against a team that's been there for 13 straight years. Uh, we shut Skowhegan out, who is. Uh, the team that's well known, um, and that's not been done in five years. So it's been an absolutely incredible, magical season, and no group of girls more deserving than the group we had this season. Uh, we started the year off. We knew we were going to be back into the, th the thick of things, and uh, these girls were bound and determined to finish the way we did. And to, to be able to do that is pretty remarkable. Uh, considering it's a type of sport that can, you know, can, things can happen. So to have that motivation and uh, the drive and to finish the way we did uh, was absolutely awesome. Uh, finished with 92 goals, uh, led up five, uh, and two of those are the most memorable, obviously the one in the state championship game. Um, but we did uh, allow a goal that a team hadn't scored all season long, and it was our senior game. Uh, the second to last game of the year, and the girls opted to you know allow this team to score, just knowing that um, we wanted to give them that that memory you know because they did have some senior players, so it was just uh quite a memorable experience to see literally their entire bench clear and rush this girl that scored the goal so it was an, a great thing that these girls uh, again allowed to happen and were more than willing to let happen. Uh, we have quite a bit of accolades uh, individually, uh, where we have our three captains here today, who are Kristen Murray, uh, Abby Walker, and Maddie Dobecki. Uh, each of these three girls, as well as another one, Caitlin Prince, made All-State. Uh, we have quite a few All-Conference, um, All-Academic uh, for Maddie Dobecki and Kristen Murray. Uh, and we have the best player in the state in this room. Uh, with Maddie Dobecki winning the Miss Maine Field Hockey Award. So, girls, can you stand up, please? <laughs> yeah, these are just phenomenal young ladies, and they're not only great athletes, but they're just involved in everything, as you can see. Uh, you look into our school, and these girls' faces are everywhere. Uh, after school, they're doing all the extra things, um, and, and they're still maintaining strong academics as well. Uh, so beyond our practices, they would rush over to um, the young seventh graders and, and teach them the sport as well. And again, this was done willingly. This is not something that was ever forced upon them, and 
they knew how you know important the sport, how great the sport, and what it's provided for them. So they wanted to be able to give that back. Um, another thing I just noticed the other day, I was nominating some girls for academic national academic awards. Actually, I forgot a couple of recognitions. Both Abby Walker and Maddie Dobecki got the All Region, a national uh, recognition uh, for field hockey, uh, and I just nominated girls for an academic national recognition, and I, I thought it was a senior recognition, but I found out that it wasn't, and we have, out of the 24 girls, 21 of them qualified for this academic recognition, which is a pretty prestigious thing. So that's the thing that I'm more proud of than anything, is the fact that these girls are uh, 3.4 out of a 4.0 average out of 24 players, and it justifies exactly why we did what we did, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of this group. It's just, it's an honor to be a part of it, so thank you. Well, I'll just wrap up and say um, what a great fall season we certainly had, as you heard. Uh, four state championships, which is really unheard of, um, and you need to know that, that some schools don't even have one state championship. We had four in one season. Um, golf, boys cross country, girls cross country, and field hockey, and our volleyball team was um, the league championship, you know, won the league championship for the SMAA. I know Coach Johnson mentioned, I think it's worth repeating, is some of our coaches um, had some pretty prestigious honors as well. Coach Murphy uh, for golf was Telegram Coach of the Year. Uh, Coach Harmon was SMA Coach of the Year. Coach Farley for girls soccer was SMA Coach of the Year. Coach Diaz for boys soccer was SMA Coach of the Year. And um, National Soccer Coaches Association Region 1 Coach of the Year. Um, Coach Kelly was also the SMA Coach of the Year and Telegram Coach of the Year. And Coach Mariello was a Telegram Coach of the Year. I think it's also worth um, repeating as well uh, all the honors that some of our student athletes got. Uh, Telegram All Stars in girls soccer was Sam Spotter and boys soccer Ian Corey and field hockey was Maddie Dobecki, Caitlin Prince and volleyball was Kayla Savage and boys cross country Jacob Terry and golf Drew Kane. As Coach mentioned, Miss Maine field hockey is Maddie Dobecki. Our Faith Littlefield Player of the Year for field hockey in SMA was also Maddie Dobecki. Becky. Um, our field hockey all-state all-academic team was Maddie Dobecki and Kristen Murray. The National Field Hockey Coaches Association all-region team all-stars was Maddie Dobecki and Abby Walker. We also had um, in football a Fitzpatrick Award nominee and Milani Hicks. Um, also the boys soccer board of officials gives a um, award each year called the Harold Charlton Award, which is given to Josh Morrissey. Um, boys soccer all-state team was Sam Ware and Ian Corey, and boys soccer SMA defensive player of the year was Ian Corey, which I'm sure you, they probably all shared with you, but um, I think it's certainly worth repeating. Um, anybody that had followed me around on state championship day would certainly understand um, the significance of student activities in a child's education in a child's life and the importance of that. And it was just uh, 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 certainly some wonderful days this fall and, and uh, the, the kids and the coaches certainly uh, deserve all our respect. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you for coming. And we certainly answer any questions that anybody might have on the board. Any board comments, Ms. Terry? Well, I want to congratulate everybody. It's been a phenomenal season. I'm so proud of the way our students and coaches conduct themselves. That is very important to me. But I wondered if there's any student or parent in the audience who would like to speak. Not even Kristen? No? <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Okay. Yes, Chris? Uh, well, I, I certainly don't want to beat a dead horse, but I, I mimic what Mr. Legage said and what Jackie said. I, um, we really are blessed as a community to have the support of the coaches and the parents. Um, the kids are phenomenal. Uh, every other community that I go to, the respect that they have for our players, 
uh, not just from a competitive level. Wins and losses are nice. Championships are nice, but the sportsmanship, the leadership um, are, are just fantastic. And that comes from the parents and the coaches. Uh, and I think we have to remember those things throughout the year, not just tonight when we look at programs and, and uh, necessities and things like that. Um, one thing I would like to suggest, uh, which would be nice for me to hear, I know many of our student athletes are also highly academically, uh, high academic performers. It would be nice to have feedback from the coaches on the seniors on your, on your squads, what they're doing, what their maybe future plans are. I know it's early for the, for the, uh, for the fall, um, um, fall sports, but maybe in the future, Mr. Legage, for the, uh, the winter or the um, um, spring sports, we could, we could get an update to on the seniors of where they're progressing and what their, what their future plans are for sure. Thank you, guys. Well, well, very well done. Very well done. Jody? <coughs> I just wanted to piggyback on what Chris said about the sportsmanship and the respect that um, other teams show our students. As the parent of small children and, and attending, we attended a lot of the boys' soccer games, it was just fun to watch my kids sort of look at those guys out on the field <laughs> as, you know, these incredible athletes. And, you know, it's just, it's nice to be able to go and feel confident in what you're going to show your kids, and it was great. It was fun to watch you guys. Yeah, I just want to, um, I didn't get to a lot of sporting events except field hockey. Um, my daughters are in seventh grade, so they had um, the incredible opportunity to learn from the varsity team, and it was just so fun to see them all have fun. The big girls, the little girls, all just learning but having fun. And not, it wasn't about winning. It was about learning and working with each other. And that seventh grade team that was kind of a rogue team is undefeated all season. And it's all due to the, to the varsity girls. So I think that really it speaks well of, of the team and the high school and the community at large. So. Donna, one more thing. Uh, I attended the Bangor game. Uh, I'm from Bangor originally, and I was up there visiting my sister and brother-in-law who spend the summer up there. And my brother-in-law and I went to the game because I knew a number of people, a number of people who knew me. And the comment was, my God, Jackie, they never give up, do they? Because Bangor is a phenomenal team. And, uh, but our, our folks did not. There was no unsportsmanlike conduct at all. We got hammered, <laughs> but they were there playing every every minute of that game. I was very proud of them and of our coaches. Very good. You serve us well, all of you. You did an outstanding job, and we're very, very proud of you. You make our school system look very, very good. So thank you for all of that. With that, uh, we're going to take a brief recess, maybe two minutes, just to allow people to leave if they wish to go. I know you have homework to do when you get there, so <laughs> go ahead home and uh, we'll conduct our meeting in just the party. <laughs>
And just to return to our agenda, item number 6.2, the Wentworth School Status Update. Dr. Entwistle? Yes, that's going to be deferred. Uh, Mr. Kozell um, had hoped to be here this evening to uh, give the board. Um, this, is, this is actually the final Wentworth update from the committee. Uh, he had hoped to be here, um, but has been pulled away due to business. And we'll schedule him uh, for the first meeting in January. Good pay. Thank you. And um, would you like to make any comments yeah, about a, our hour of coding? Just a just a couple of um, a couple of updates for you. Uh, we have Mike Kelly here, who does a great job writing. But this is actually a forecaster article, um, <laughs> and I want. Okay. I already saw it. I already saw it. The pictures. All right. Next. Uh, next time I will bring Mike's, um, Mike's article, but uh, the forecaster beat him out a little bit, and I wanted you to see this if you hadn't seen it. Um, it is about Scarborough students and computer coding. I know that there, it has touched the families of, mm -hmm. of uh, some of our board members. I also have to share with you uh, that um, I, was in, uh, I was in Wentworth today, and it, it just reminded me that if you build it, they will come, and they will use it, and they will embrace it. I was teaching. I was talking with a young uh, teacher um, who has been teaching for a few years, but is new to um, new to us here in Scarborough. And she was telling me about um, her experience uh, having the technology. The, the lesson that I watched was all using technology. But she was telling me how the, her students, her fifth graders, use the uh, the, the uh, laptops that are available to them. And she said, "We're doing something." And I was showing them how to. Um, do Google Docs. And you know, the, we as adults are learning how to do Google Docs. She said um, a couple of the kids knew how to do it, and before long, um, there were 12 of them that kn then knew how to do it because the kids were teaching each other. And I just thought, what a, what a great story in terms of uh, the investment in uh, Wentworth technology. It just, it just continues. And I think there was a lot of excitement in terms of the, um, the hour of coding. It was actually more than an hour, um, and, pe and the kids really liked it. So I wanted to share that. The other is um, I was actually in a class today um, in, in, that same, in that same class with, um, and I happened to go in and sit down, and who was sitting next to me but Lillian Finley, who came to visit me, um, again, sometime this week, I can't remember which day, uh, her and her mom and dad, uh, but I had heard earlier, it must have been Tuesday morning, because we're at Leadership Council, we had a photo of her with a big smile, and her goal was to um, collect 500 Beanie Babies that would go to the, uh, to the medical uh, mission. And, um, and here she is sitting on 1,900 uh, Beanie Babies. And so we were all very excited. Um, I did tell her when I saw her today that I believe that she's probably cleaned out the entire region <laughs> of Beanie Babies, so she's going to have to take on a new project. So I'll pass this around. Uh, she's adorable. She's so excited. Um, and uh, she thanks uh, the board and the principals uh, for really promoting her cause. It was really um, a community effort, and it, and it paid out nicely for those uh, kids that are going to get the Beanie Babies. That was, that was Thank you. Oh yes, Mr. Um, yeah, I, I, and I, no, no pressure at all. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, obviously the the coding was very, very successful. Um, I, I'd like to see us maybe look at broadening that or expanding that a little bit in the future, some way, somehow. And you know, again, no pressure to make a decision now. But I think based on the success and the the enthusiasm of the students, I think we may have hit hit on something that we could. Uh, used to channel some of that uh, restless energy, if you will. So Absolutely. I'd like to see us uh, build on that if, if we could. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and the, uh, the tech and instructional coaches are, are at work uh, on a regular basis, um, ensuring that we are, work, that we are truly um, creating more and more access for kids, um, in, the, uh, in the younger grades anyway, uh, to technology and really challenging them in terms of how they're applying technology and supporting teachers in terms of using it and integrating it in their instruction. It really is, it, it really is amazing. I know that mm -hmm. you'll recall initially teachers were, were a little hesitant thinking, oh my God, I'm going to go into this high-tech building. I hope there's not a lot of pressure. Inevitably, any, any classroom that I've been in, the technology has been somehow in use. And, and it's, it's very, amazing. very impressive. It's, great. it's yeah. amazing in a short period of time how 
the curriculum and, and uh, teaching has changed. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Shea? I don't mean to put the girls on the spot, but and I know we probably all want to go home, but I was interested to know sort of from the high school side, I left the last meeting thinking a lot about the fact that K through 8 students were getting this code of, hour of code, which turned into probably a half a day of code, but um, we're getting a real chance to sort of dive into it. And I couldn't help but sort of feel the high school, we were letting the high school down. The high school students don't have the tools to all participate. And those students are six months, a year, two years, three years away from actually utilizing it in a career in college, in the military, something. Mm -hmm. And it didn't sit well with me because I felt like those, you guys needed it sooner now, 14 years ago, however long ago. <laughs> um, we keep talking about 21st century learning and we're 14 years into the 21st century, but um, I'm anxious to know how it worked for you guys. Did you participate? How did it go? I didn't, I didn't participate at all. Um, I didn't, I kind of agree about leaving the last meeting feeling, well, what about the high school? Um, there were little posters, kind of, not really posters, sheets of paper around the building saying, like, come in during your study hall to a computer lab and see what you can do. And there was some announcements some days, but, um, yeah, I didn't feel like it was as, um, like it wasn't as important or something for the high school to do it, which isn't true. I feel like we need to, we need to do this kind of stuff. And it's new, and it's not something that we've learned before, and it's um, going to be a big part, I guess, of the 21st century, like careers and things that we have to start picking majors and things that we want to do with our lives and just feel like it's a good skill for high school students to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it, it, I mean, that was on a day that I didn't have any study halls in my rotation, so there's no option if you have a full schedule to go, mm -hmm. go uh, do the coding, even if you were really, really interested in it, so... Um, there was kind of a lack of almost advertisement of it and the lack of having it be mandatory almost it took away a lot of the benefit mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I think everybody could have gotten from it. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to share that we are working with the high school um, staff with a high school uh, tech work group using a very similar model that we used with the Wentworth teachers uh, about three years ago. And um, as a matter of fact, the group that uh, the group is going to Wentworth in January to work uh, and see what is uh, what's happening down there, so they understand where the kids are coming uh, from, and uh, working with the tech integrator at Wentworth. I also I, I'd like to chime in. I think it's important for us as a board to recognize that I don't think it's necessarily anything that that the high school administration is doing to ignore it. They don't have the resources, the infrastructure, or the means behind them. So in my mind, one of the worst things you could do is, is hype it, support it, and get everybody excited about it and not pull through. So I, I think it's important to note that too. I don't think it was a lack of desire to participate on the level of the high school. I certainly didn't get that impression. I think it's just a, an issue of the infrastructure is not there, the, the tools and materials are not there. Um, we'd like to have it. We wish we could have it. We all recognize we should have it, but we don't. So, I, I mean, I think that, that helps us, certainly helps us prioritize a little bit, I think, for the upcoming cycle of needs versus wants and things like that. And uh, the more we hear back from, from our, our student liaisons, are, uh, for me, is very, very helpful because you guys live it every day. And uh, it's easy for us from, from the ivory tower up here to have ideas and, and images and stuff, but it's good to get checked back from you guys too. So I, I think that's important, and I think we, again, help us establish some priorities and some, some needs for the upcoming cycle. Yes, just um, to end on a slightly brighter note, um, mm -hmm. every kid I talked to in the middle school or Wentworth um, wishes it was every week. That it was every Friday, that's how they ended their week. Because it was so fun. For them, it was like playing games for two hours. My kids came home, and Jody's too, and coded all weekend. They're writing HTML code after that one hour of having the free time to learn Amazing. coding. They have a website that they've made. I mean, in just from that day, they had never experienced it before and are writing websites. And it's like the, their fun playtime now is writing HTML code. It, I was watching him, and it could have been, I mean, 
like a Martian words on there. It made no sense to me, but um, it makes sense to them, and they're cruising with it. So. But they also like to click a button a hundred times. I'm just wondering if George or Jan knows. You know, I know really this article says you know computer science is not you know recognized as a graduation credit. Um, what's the situation there? I mean, does not mean does that mean any? No computer classes, even as AP classes, you can have in any high school in Maine to be recognized as a credit class. What does that? Uh, these are uh, um, on the second I don't page know what in the main. <laughs> where, where are you reading that? Uh, the, the back of the first page on the okay. bottom okay. side. Mm -hmm. And I'm with Cindy. Five other states do not recognize computer mm -hmm. science as a valid credit towards graduation. Does that mean our well? I'm, I'm, that does not mean that our school system does not require it as a part of graduation. Right, right. There is a technology requirement. It's um, it's basically just saying that it is it is not um, it is not an official graduation requirement. Correct. The state hasn't recognized it as a requirement. Right, but if we require or have a classes, they can credit towards graduation. Oh yes, yes. Okay. It's All right. Credit. It's just not a, a required credit. You know, we're teaching, you know, we do teach a 21st century technology skills class, um, and the interesting and ironic thing is that we're basically using 20th century technology to teach the class. Um, the the uh, tools that they have are pretty good at um, uh, a slow, ac slow access to internet um, and uh, word processing is what they can do. And if you move beyond, if you move beyond that, um, they basically don't don't work or they don't work so well. Okay. I mean, some students they say, so you know what, you cannot have a computer science class as a graduation requirement. So, which means you know, of course, the better, the more um, courses we offer, that would be great. You know, if we have the resources to do that, that would be great for the kids because you know this is 21st century and those are very basic. Have, um, having the resources mm -hmm. is a prerequisite That's to right. offering the courses, yes. having the tools. Right. Yes. Right. Every year that our students don't have those tools and our teachers don't have the ability to connect technology to learning, our kids lo lose out. They absolutely do, in my opinion, because I have watched it in other school systems. I'm very familiar with what it looks like when that technology is in place. And we don't have it for our students at the high school. It's a really significant yeah. issue in this town. I, I'll just piggyback on that, and then I'll stop, because I know we don't want to get out of here. But I, I think it goes beyond of our kids missing out. Um, I, I don't know anybody in the 21st century who has a job, a professional job, that doesn't have a laptop and that doesn't update it every two years. You know, I, I'm, I see it on the technical side as an engineer. We, we're constantly getting new hardware, new software. It's a learning curve that you have to be, you know, that much farther ahead to pick it up. And I think it's not a question at this point of our kids missing out and, oh, darn, it would be nice, but, you know, it's not necessary. We're well beyond that. I think we're at the point now where um, I don't know any organization, like I said, quite frankly, any professional organization that doesn't have a computer, that they're not running some software, some accounting, um, or it's not a core part of their functioning. So, uh, it, again, you know, we're 14 years behind the time at least, if not more. Um, we're playing catch up, and again, it's all part of establishing our priorities and our our needs and how we're going to fund it and how we're going to move forward with it. But I, I think we're well beyond it being a nicety at this point. I, I don't know what you guys think, the student students think. Uh, I mean, it's just, it was telling for me at the conference we're the only district that <laughs> in Cumberland County that I'm aware of that doesn't have one-to-one -one computing in the high school. Maybe I'm wrong, and I, I hope I am wrong, but that's the impression that I got from the, the school management meeting, the board management meeting. So, um, you know, it's time. It really is. I hope whatever, you know, model we use, you know, one-to-one -one or bring your own or mixed model, I hope the, you know, leadership bring up a proposal for us to really seriously look at and hopefully, you know, make that a reality in the district. So looking that, forward to that. Is, that. That, is, uh, that business case is being updated and the proposal is, is being prepared as uh, We've been in process, and that will be coming very that soon. That would be great. Thank you. Very good.
7.0, motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1, MSRA 4056A, a personnel matter, not to return to public session this evening. So moved. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Six. Thank you. We are adjourned.